Yo, what's good? I'm Fire here, back in the video, and today we're going to be hopping into a Madden 24 gameplay, offensive gameplay. Today we're going to be running the Gun Tight Flex formation. This is a request formation. You guys love it every year I post it, and this is out of the Los Angeles Rams offensive playbook. Now, it is also in the run and gun or something, but we like the Rams. Now, audibles-wise, we are going to be... Uh, generally doing and these aren't the right ones but we'll do double spot cross bench pa uh shot post or whatever and then something else or actually that would be a double spot so that's going to be the last one but anyways here this is going to be a post commentary let me know if you guys like this strategy a little bit better i recorded this gameplay last night we're just going to be talking about it over it what we did what we like so i'm going to be passing the ball a lot out of this there's not really any good runs out of the tight flex but out of this rams playbook there is a couple of other decent things and those include um gun bunch offset and gun tight slots halfback week so there's a few other formations that you can audible to if you need to run the ball or if you want to pass out of some other things uh or maybe tight slots halfback week isn't in it but you do have bunch offsets so and bunch wide flex but anyways we set our audibles to what we have now and um so right here, we're going to run the PA post shot. This is going to be your bread and butter out of this play. You have a drag, a deeper crosser. Amari Cooper would have been open, but you're going to take the open receiver. Um, but you have a drag, a deep over route, a deep post behind it, and then a deep crosser. It's really good against man cup, really good against zone. Uh, so we're going to try and run that a lot. Here's this cross play. It comes with a crosser from that B receiver. So to open them up, I like clearing it out with A. And then we just go ahead, motion over Mari Cooper. If it's a cover two look, he can get open on that wheel. Or what you can do is throw him on something like a corner out or a post route. We, uh, I like Elijah Moore on that backside drag. So we go post with Amari and then we have a little wheel. So here we're just going to read that flat. Um, and I am able to fit it over the top to Jerome Ford, despite throwing it maybe a little bit late. Uh, we had the drag as well. So against cover three, you're able to hit both. It just depends if it's pressed the outside third probably plays that a lot better and that's a pass that you really can't throw but because he was backed off just that five yards it's going to allow us to do that now one thing we do have is the halfback counter and this is going to be your best run option so we go ahead and do that and we actually end up getting phenomenal blocks here from the offensive line he misses a tackle and nicholas chubb is able to take that to the crib for us so overall couldn't have worked out much better uh, against there now typically that will that run work like that not generally but um you're gonna be passing the ball a lot so if he's in something like a dollar or a dime formation that can be a good run to mix in a few times a drive to pick up chunk plays because obviously he will start adjusting to it because you can't afford to let someone run the ball like that out of a formation like this because it just makes it almost impossible to defend but anyways we're gonna be going up on defense here now i'm gonna be kind of Running a few different defenses here, just testing things out. Um, I believe I ran a dime normal mainly, which I did post a video on out of dime rush. This dime normal blitz works more or less the exact same. And this formation I think is really good just because it's a lot better against the run than something like dollar, but you can still generate very good amounts of pressure out of it. So um, also it's just gonna require less defensive backs really than dollar because you need one last safety so personnel wise it might be a little bit better as well but against the run you can see how it would work now first play goes play action he does have cd open would i have been able to work that probably not i was a little bit late um pollard ended up picking up newsom off that left side but he ends up getting through if i'm not mistaken uh he's going hurry up here same look now you see i'm kind of adjusting typically what i'll do out of this is end up manning up one of the slot corners to the strong side of the field so the bunch is to the right i'll man up that slot corner on the right to one of those wide receivers and just send one player off the edge so you're still rushing five that player off the edge still should get pressure and it's it's a good thing again if he's going to block his running back then you can have that here we switch to a little bit of a match look now we all know how matches this year now this is weird because he like underthrows it so much that somehow Michael Gallup is able to undercut it. That was four verticals. He was literally just running a go route. Um, would have been an easy interception, but Dak like rolling off the back foot, crossed the body, underthrew it by that much that <laughs> he was able to like make a perfect cut to where it was almost like a smart routed in route. He actually ends up picking up the first down. So he'll give props where it is due on that one. Got to live with that. But he's sticking with these under center formations mainly. So. This dime is going to be something we like. Here, Tony Pollard is blocking. We send six people, and we get two people free. So it was six-man protection versus six blitzed. 
um, and we get pressure. Now, all, I'm not doing anything crazy here. All I'm doing is pinching the defense, and then I am just like standing in that gap. I'm not crashing. I'm not shifting the D-line anywhere. All I'm doing is pinching the D-line and pressing, and that is really all you have to do. Now, here, my controller kind of got stuck, so I wasn't able to do anything, but the pressure still gets through. Um, he has some people open. He's not able to hit him. Obviously, Pollard was wide open there, but... Here we actually are able to press. We once again blitz that one guy off the edge. It was the left side. And we force him into an interception here. So we end up making that lurk and we get off the field. So good defensive stop. He really doesn't know how to deal with the pressure. He needs to be out of under center because that is just not what you want to do typically. But nonetheless, we're back on offense here. I'm going to go back to the PA post shot again. You have drag with A. He's wide open. B might have been open, but I'm trying to go over the top to Amari Cooper and he kind of sells here. We get a weird animation. I thought he should have caught it. Maybe I should have possession caught or something. I was afraid that uh, Elijah Moore maybe was able to be in the area and allow that other corner defending him to make a play. So here I'm going to try and motion out Amari Cooper. This is out of the cross play. Again, we have two drags. We have B on that deeper cross and then Amari Cooper on the post. Both drags get really wide open here. I almost... <laughs> Made him like look stupid there, but the stick work failed me. I accidentally went out of bounds, and that's what happens. I hadn't played this game in like a week, so definitely a little bit rusty. But nonetheless, we're cooking here. I'm going to go back to the counter. We It worked last time. Just as a nice play to end out the quarter here. Uh, Michael Parsons goes flying, but he does get a few sheds, some help from a few other players. And overall, that's going to end the quarter. So again, it's a really hit or miss play. You're not going to be able to get more many four or five yard gains running the counter. It's really going to be 10 plus or you're going to lose yards or just get hit at the line of scrimmage type of thing. Keep that in mind. Nonetheless, we're looking pretty good here. We have a few plays that we haven't even gone to. We've really been focusing more on crossing routes. We haven't touched the corner routes here, but here I'm saying here a lot, but we're going to go to the double spot here looking for Elijah Moore. Now, this was a match coverage, so we really wait on it. And we're able to hit Njoku in the end zone. This would have been an easier play from the other side of the field. Um, but, uh, and again, it would have been easier if I would have motioned out the streak. But I was hoping it was a cover too. And we would have been able to hit him. But nonetheless, we hit it late. He's a big target. So we're able to just go up, make that catch. And the patience does pay, uh, it pays off there. Because, you know, we were able to wait on it. If we throw it early, it's probably an interception. But because we waited on it. We were able to take advantage there and we were able to throw that touchdown. So we're looking really good on offense. He hasn't shown any stops at being able to defend us, which you definitely love to see. Uh, now here we got a little kick return. Overall, defensively, we still are in a good position because we haven't had to show really anything, honestly. The fact of the matter is he hasn't been able to move the ball, so we haven't had to go into any crazy defensive adjustments or switching coverages, things of that nature. And if you're able to not have to do that, it's really good because the longer you can go in the game without having to show your hand, it's going to be better off, of course. So that's kind of what we're doing here. He tries to go deep. That's not going to work. Emerson, I don't know who this guy is, but he makes a heck of a play on CD Lamb in one-on-one. -on -one. He's been trying to hit CD on that deep post or deep over route, and he just hasn't been able to complete that pass our man coverage is definitely holding up he's feeling the pressure and he's maybe not stepping into these throws the way that he probably should be so another stop there going back on offense once again and here we go to a play called slot curl and i thought he was actually quitting here which kind of would have been a bad spot because only nine minutes into the video we would not have been able to um i would have had to play another game and if that game goes like the distance then you're in some trouble but nonetheless, we see a man coverage look. We throw Nick Chubb on a wheel route, and boom, he fries Leighton Van Der Esch in one-on-one -on -one coverage, as you should expect him to, especially if they don't have safeties in there. It's fairly easy to take advantage. Uh, so we're up 21-0 here. We're in a pretty good spot, and uh, overall... There is a lot to like about what's happening here. So 
we're just going to go ahead, kick it back to him, and see if we can really close out this game. Because offensively, we've been really good. And defensively, he hasn't moved. I don't think he's, he's got one first down here. So he's going to be going to the I form slot. And here I'm going to switch up to Dollar. Just switching up the defense. Maybe we're, you know, we're going to give him a little bit of a chance to run the ball if he wants to. We're going to go to a DB fire here first. And then we're going to switch it up to some other things that I was trying out. So he actually makes a nice juke there. Credit to him. Um, running that ball for the first time, actually, today. Definitely should have at least tried. But that this is the difference between Dime and Dollar. Why I like Dime a lot. Because seeing this Dollar look is so enticing to run the football. It really is. Um, versus Dime, you see he was really scared to even run the ball once. So that's really just your biggest difference between them. But if he's going to pass the ball, Dollar is going to be probably a little bit better, a little bit stronger. It's going to allow you to do a little bit more adjustments-wise, having uh, the extra guy versus um, there. But here you see the weaknesses, just running the ball. It's super easy. I haven't developed a super good run defense out of this Dollar. Maybe some people have. But obviously, you generally would never want to run Dollar against this. You would probably switch to Nickel 3-3. What we're going to do here is just kind of bring the safety down. We're going to try and start using the safety, take advantage there. I wasn't able to get all my adjustments off, i.e. pinching the defensive line. So uh, this is where we are going to kind of take advantage uh, of that and try and stop his run. We're going to cross three fire, and this blitz is actually pretty good. So we're just going to send the slot corner. We're going to send the linebacker. Just for something else, that linebacker that loops is going to be really good for run defense. I think you guys will see. So I'm kind of fine throwing that pass. Maybe I have to throw it a second earlier, but the curl flat did a good job of really making me wait on it, even on the short side of the field. Here, we're going back to cross. We motioned B out. We would have ended up having him, but again, you're just going to take your easy read. You're going to take your drag until he hard flats over there. So this is always my advice. Throw the drags, throw the flats until you can no longer do it. It's not the most exciting thing in the world to do, but it's something that you have to do if you want to open up the long ball. So here we try and open up a few things with the flat. We have a uh, wheel route. We have a deeper post with X. RB and X would have ended up being wide open, but we just hit Nick Chubb again, get him his third touchdown of the day, and really take control here. 28 to zero in the first half. The offense has been very high powered. Defense has definitely gave us some short fields, helped us out a little bit, which I would have rather drove the, the long distance. You could see a little bit more plays, but it's the, it's the way she goes, you know. So kick that extra point in there. Uh, let me know down below if you guys enjoy this style versus a live commentary. I did do a few live commentaries. I don't remember exactly which ones they were, but they were kind of the long full video live commentary. So let me know which one you like better. It's a little bit better insight when I'm doing it like this. Whereas when I'm actually doing the live commentary, I'm more focused on like my reads and what I'm actually doing. So I don't have as much time to explain. Um, obviously, you know, you're focused. So it's, it's tougher to do that. 
now. Defensively, we're going to go back to our dollar. We're going to go back to our cross three fire because it had been working so much. Make sure you always reset those zone drops at the beginning of a drive in case you forgot the whole drive. You don't want it to happen again. So running basically the same defense and you see here run defense is really good. He even makes a few man miss and only picks up two yards. So generally we're sitting really good in that particular situation. Um, He's sitting in this I-form slot. He's going to go play action here. He maybe has cooks, but our curl flat does a really, really good job there of playing both the flat and the uh, kind of post or corner out. So it definitely makes it challenging for him to do that. Again, he's really trying to look at deep. So here we're going to send a lot of pressure. He's going to actually run the ball. I'm fine with that. Maybe he wants to make it fourth and manageable, which he does. So right here, we'll see what he wants to do. Is he going to run the ball? Probably not, but he is using a ton of time if he's actually trying to score on this drive. Very interesting philosophy we got there. So we're going to switch to a spinner here. It's five wide. Not the biggest fan of running cover three against five wide for obvious reasons. So we just send everybody. We get two people. 